Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel Rashid Iqbal. Today we are going to learn the process of calculating right size of UPS system. So without any definition and further delay, let me start the process. Before calculation of proper size of UPS and battery, you must need to know the following things. Number 1. List your equipments. Start by listing all the devices you need to protect with a UPS. This might include server, network switch, computer or other critical devices. Second, determine power consumption. Look at the power rating of each device, usually found on the device level or in the user manual. This rating is usually given in watt or volt ampere. Third, convert watt to VA if needed. If the power rating is given in watt, you can convert in volt ampere. Using the formula VA is equal to watt by power factor. The power factor is typically around 0.8 for most of the equipment. Or you can select as per your requirement, as per your uh, standard. It might be 0.9, 0.85. It depends on your design. Total power requirement. Add up all power consumption of all your devices to get the total power requirement in VA. Let me take one example to get you more understand. Find the proper size of UPS for industrial application with the following equipments. There is two server. Each server power consumption is 500 watt. Five network switch and each of them is 100 watt. One control system that is 1000 watt and one air conditioning unit that is 3000 watt. So let me start the calculation. First, as I said, list the equipment and their power rating. So we will calculate all the power consumption rating. We have two servers. So two multiplied by 500 equal to 1000 watt. We have five network switch and each of them is 100 watt. So total network switch is 500 watt. We have total one control system that is 1000 watt. One air conditioning unit that is 3000 watt. Now we can calculate all the wattage value and the total wattage is 5500 watt. As I said, for UPS calculation, we required power in VA, not in watt. So we can convert into VA. So we can assume uh, 0 0.8 power factor. Total power in VA equal to 5500 divided by 0 0.8, that is power factor. So after calculation, we get 6875 VA. Now we need to add some safety margin. It might be 25% or 30%. Usually we take 25% or it depends on your requirement. So I considered here 25% safety margin. So total power with safety margin equal to 6875 multiplied by 1.25 that is 25%. After multiplication we get 8593 VA. So this is the total consumption of our system. So according to our consumption we can choose UPS size. This 8,593 VA UPS is not available in the market. So we can go with the nearest size of the UPS, which is available in the market. So here we can select 10 KVA unit. The nearest standard size of UPS would be 10 KVA. So this size of UPS is perfect for the given load. Now we will calculate the battery EH rating for the same 10 KVA UPS and the load current is 25 ampere or we can calculate the current I already calculated and the backup time required 30 minutes only. If power is shut down, then we require 30 minute backup time from UPS and the battery which are using that is 12 volt each and total numbers of battery is 34, which is connected in series. That's mean total volt we achieve 408 volt. If you are enjoying this video and finding the information helpful, Please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Your support means a lot to me. Additionally, if you would like to support the channel financially, you can use the super thanks features. Now let's start the calculation for battery AH rating. For the battery calculation, you need total current drawn and the time of backup. Load current we have 25 ampere as it is mentioned there and desire backup time T equal to 30 minute. Now we will calculate the capacity without considering discharge rate and reserve rate. So the C equal to I multiply by T. 
वेयर सी इक्वल टू बैटरी कैपेसिटी इन एम्पेयर आवर और ए एच आई इक्वल टू लोड करेंट एंड टी इक्वल टू टाइम इन आवर दिस रेटेड करेंट इज मैंशन ट्वेंटी फाइव एम्पेयर एंड टी इक्वल टू थर्टी मिनट सो वी कैन कन्वर्ट थर्टी मिनट इन टू आवर इट इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव आवर सो मल्टीप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस सिक्वेशन वी गॉट ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव ए एच एज आई सेट दिस कैलकुलेशन इज कंसिडर्ड विदाउट रिजर्व कैपेसिटी एंड डिस्चार्ज रेट कैपेसिटी सो वी मस्ट इंक्लूड दिस ऑल पैरामीटर्स एडिंग रिजर्व कैपेसिटी यूजली वी कंसिडर्ड एटी परसेंट ऑफ यूजेबल कैपेसिटी सो I just considered 80 percent, so C nu is the reserve capacity, and 12.5 ah divided by 80 percent, that is 0.8, equal to 15.62 ah. This is the new capacity of battery after adding reserve capacity. Actually, reserve capacity refers to the amount of time a UPS can continue to provide power to connected device during a power outage. it is usually measured in minute and indicate how long the ups can keep the equipment running until the battery is depleted now the rate of discharge rate of discharge means the speed at which the battery releases its stored energy it usually measured in term of current or as a percentage of battery capacity per unit of time a higher rate of discharge means the battery will depleted its energy faster while lower rate of discharge means it will last longer if the battery is rated for 20 hour discharge rate for a shorter time like 0.5 hr the effective capacity decreases assume a discharge factor 0.5 to get the proper discharge rate you can use the manufacturer catalog otherwise i assume here 0.5 now the c final this is the final capacity of the battery c final equal to c new divided by 0.5 0.5 is the rate of discharge equal to 15.62 ah what we get from the reserve capacity divided by 0.5 after solving this equation we got 31.25 ah that's mean this is the proper size of battery capacity that is 31.25 ah for 30 minutes so we can go with this rating one more parameter required while calculating the ups that is redundancy redundancy means having extra parts in a system to keep it working if some part is fail if one part stop working the other part take over this ensure the system keep running smoothly basically there is a three types of redundancy so let me explain the first one n plus 1 redundancy n plus 1 redundancy is a concept used to ensure system reliability and availability in the context of car tire in normal condition a car typically has four tires that are used simultaneously when driving these four tire represent the n in n plus 1 redundancy where n is the minimum numbers of component needed for normal operation plus 1 refer to an additional component that is not in use under normal condition but is available as a backup in the case of a car this would be the spare tire while failure scenario if one of the four working tire get punctured or fail the spare tire that is plus one component can be used to replace the damaged tire this ensures that the car can continue to operate even after a failure now the second redundancy is 2n redundancy system every component has a complete duplicate that operate simultaneously for car tire this would mean in normal condition car would normally need four tire to operate these four tire represent n as i said in redundancy mode you would have a second set of four tire fully installed and ready to take over at any time so in total the car would have eight tires two complete set of four while in failure scenario if any of the primary set of four tire fails The secondary set of four tire is already in place to ensure that the car can continue to operate without any interruption. Now the third redundancy, 2n plus 1 redundancy. In 2n plus 1 redundancy system, you have a complete duplicate of all component plus one additional spare component. In term of car tire, this would mean 
In normal condition, the car would normally need four tire to operate. In redundancy mode, you would have a second set of four tire plus one extra spare tire. So, in total, the car would have nine tires, two complete set of four plus one spare. In failure scenario, if all primary set of tire fail, then secondary set of four tire can be used. After that, still any one of four tire fail, the extra spare tire can be used to replace the damaged tire, ensuring that the car can continue to operate without any interruption. So, if we use N plus one redundancy for 10 kVA load, then first we need to identify N. Let assume N is the number of power supply needed to handle the load of 10 kVA. For simplicity, assume each power supply can handle 5 kVA. Now calculate the total number of unit N plus 1. In this case, N equal to 2 because each power supply can handle 5 kVA. So 2 are needed to handle 10 kVA that is 5 plus 5 equal to 10 kVA. Total unit required in N plus 1 redundancy as we know N equal to 2. So we just put 2 in this equation. So total unit required equal to 2 plus 1 equal to 3 that is total 3 units required. You can see in the diagram in N plus 1 under normal condition the two 5 kVA UPS units share the load providing the required load of 10 kVA. If either of these units fail the backup 5 kVA UPS take over ensuring that the 10 kVA load continue to receive power without interruption. This setup ensures redundancy by having two 5 kVA UPS units operational to meet the 10 kVA demand and a third 5 kVA UPS unit ready to step in if one of the primary unit fails. In case two of them UPS fail, then single UPS unit will not be able to handle the full 10 kVA load as each UPS unit has a capacity of only 5 kVA. To prevent such a scenario from causing a complete power failure, then a higher level of redundancy or additional backup measures would be necessary, like N plus 2 or 2N or so on. Now to N redundancy for 10 kVA load. In this setup, we have two complete systems, each capable of handling the full 10 kVA load independently. This means, we need four 5 kVA UPS units arranged in two sets. If one or two UPS fails, the other two UPS continue to supply power without any disruption, providing a very high level of reliability. Both sets are active all the time, sharing the load or being capable of taking over completely if needed. If in case three UPS fail, then the single UPS will not be able to handle the full 10 kVA load. Now 2n plus 1 redundancy. In this redundancy same 2n plus 1 equal to 2 multiplied by 2 plus 1 equal to 5. Total 5 units we required in this redundancy 2n plus 1. So total 5 as per 5 I made this diagram. This setup includes 2 complete system plus 1 additional backup unit. For a 10 kVA load we have 4 5 kVA UPS unit running in 2 sets of 2 plus one extra 5 kVA UPS unit as a backup. In normal operation, two set of two 5 kVA units share the load. In case any UPS fail from set one, the other set handle the load. If two UPS fail from both set, still the remaining UPS handle the load. If three numbers of UPS fail, still these two UPS will share the load. In worst condition, if all four UPS fail, then the single UPS unit will not be able to handle the full 10 kVA load. So in summary, N plus 1 redundancy means having one extra component in addition to the minimum required component. In 2N redundancy means having a complete duplicate set of components operating simultaneously. 2N plus 1 redundancy means having a complete duplicate set of component plus one additional spare component. So friends, in this video, I explained how to calculate UPS and battery size. Please like and subscribe to my Rashid Iqbal channel. If you would like to support me financially, you can give a super thanks. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.